Welcome back to The Dangin, everybody. In this episode, The Dangin gets a brand new projector, and we go 4K. Stay tuned. Welcome back to The Dangin, everybody. And thanks for taking the time to check out my unboxing of the BenQ TK850i. For those familiar with this particular projector, it is a 4K UHD DLP projector. In the box to start, we have the power cord, the Android TV HDMI dongle, the Android TV remote, which also powers the projector, and the remote for the BenQ projector, along with manuals and other literature. As you can see, the projector itself has a brushed metal finish on front, along with a lens cap. Uh, the color of the metal itself uh, is a sky blue brushed metal effect. You will see that the lens itself is housed on the far side with a 4K symbol below it, indicating the resolution that it outputs. There's also an IR detector just near that lens, along with three feet to help adjust and level the projector if you're keeping it on a surface that's projecting from the ground up or the floor or some type of shelving unit. On the back, you'll see this projector in particular has two HDMI 2.0 ports, a H or USB 3.0 port, and a standard USB port for charging at 2.5 amps, along with an audio output, a optical audio, a service port. And on the top, you will see the controls used to adjust not only focus, but also zoom and lens shift below that would below that sliding door i should say are the power functions the directional arrows as well as some other buttons to adjust the projector right from the unit itself on the side you'll see there's an intake fan and on the larger vented side you'll see the exit fans On the bottom, there's also three mounting holes for hanging the projector. Most universal projector mounts will fit. At this time, I'm going to disassemble the top of the projector unit itself and install the Android dongle, which is encased in this particular box that I'm opening right now. Along with some literature, the Android dongle itself is much like a Fire TV stick in that it is controlled by an HDMI port on one end and a 
USB for power on the left side of the unit. I'm now going to open up the projector with the Phillips head screws on each side near the vent covers. Once exposed, you'll see that there is a cavity in the center of the BenQ TKA50 that has a USB, uh, I should say a micro USB power source, which you'll plug in first, and that's on the side of the dongle. You will then maneuver the dongle at a diagonal action and place it inside the HDMI port that's underneath the housing. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and put the housing back on, replace the Phillips screws, and you're ready for an install. Here's a closer look of all of the components that come with the BenQ. With the ability to process HDR at 3000 lumens on high brightness, this Android TV powered projector is ideal for rooms that have low light and that have plenty of light. With an excellent budget price of around $15.99, this projector is ideal for those looking to upgrade their media rooms to 4K. Hey guys, wanted to give you a quick video on how quick the startup time is for the BenQ TK850i. So what I'm gonna do is gonna just set the stopwatch real quick here on my iPhone and hit the power button on the BenQ at the same time. And you guys can see exactly how long it takes this DLP projector to boot up. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the lights first. Hey Google, turn off theater lights. All right, so three, two, one. So right now I have the PS5 running in the background. This is the BenQ boot up screen. Right now we're entering about 29 seconds. Once the PS5 screen pops up, I'll hit the stop. and stop. Almost one minute on the dot. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'll brighten the image for you just so you can. About one minute. Right to boot up screen. Not too bad for a 4K projector. Okay, cool. So the next thing I wanted to do was actually just take you through the menu settings on the projector itself. Uh, while I film. So I'm going to go ahead and set the camera up on a tripod here and run through all of the menu settings and show you some examples of how good this projector looks in the various modes. Uh, I'll do a little bit of commentary to it as well. Okay, cool. So hopefully everybody can see exactly what I'm seeing here. Still the PlayStation menu, but what I want to do is take you through some test examples and how this remote works in particular. So the first remote that I want to use is actually the, the supplied media player remote, right? Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually flip, I'm going to turn out the lights. Hey Google, turn off every light. And I'm actually just going to flip through the different menu settings uh, of this particular device. So the first things first is it shows your HDMI inputs here, right? So HDMI 1, HDMI 2, the media reader or the USB and then your HDMI 3 is the, uh, the, the, I don't want to call it a fire stick, but it's the media player HDMI device that we put inside the unit itself. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, show you what that looks like. 
Once again, we're on eco mode. It has your simple apps. It has your, your Google or your Android home screen. Um, allows you to select from all your different apps. Uh, much like one of my favorite devices, the NVIDIA Shield, uh, the setup is almost identical. Uh, this is a little bit more customizable than like your Fire TV and some of your other devices. Uh, so I would highly recommend the Android uh, operating system when it comes to this. Uh, right here, you know, you can look through your various YouTube videos, Disney Plus, and you can add all your different apps. So let's give you an example how quick this thing kind of moves with YouTube. It is on Wi-Fi, keep that in mind. Not too bad. The speaker that you hear in the background is actually a speaker of the projector. It's not too bad. Um, I have a home theater system in the Dangent, so uh, it's not comparable to that. But for somebody who might just be using it in a bedroom or a small room uh, or next to them and they don't have room for other speakers, it's perfectly fine. And just so you know, the video mode in, in particular that this projector is set on right now is cinema. You have your picture mode, which I just showed you. That allows you to select and change the different calibrations of brightness, contrast, color, tint, sharpness, and it also has an advanced mode. As of right now, being in cinema mode, it allows me to select these different select, uh, changes here. Gamma, color temperature, color management, cinema master, dynamic iris, brilliant color, and then again, the light mode, whether it's eco, smart eco, or normal mode. Right now we're in normal mode. If I head back to the top, it then allows you to adjust overscan. It also allows you to select your HDR auto or off. And it also has a silence mode. And the silence mode in particular uh, controls the noise of the fan by adjusting the brightness level as well. So here's an example of putting that on. You see that the color changes just slightly as far as brightness goes. Um, but if you listen behind me, I'm not sure if it picks it up on the camera exactly or not, but you can hear that it's much quieter. I'll go ahead and leave it on silence mode. The third tab is your projector position. Obviously that's where you're mounting it, where you're setting it. In this case, front ceiling for me, it's uh, essentially upside down on the ceiling projecting forward onto a screen. I did select it so it has auto keystoning. Um, you can do that manually if you'd like. In this case, we showed you the test pattern it allows you to select your aspect ratio. If you have it plugged in through trigger, you can have it power on when your, place, when your PlayStation turns on or when your AVR turns on or when an amplifier turns on. And then it has your high altitude mode. Other things you can go through is a selection of languages. The splash screen that I showed you at the beginning, which is like the BenQ Bean, you can change that to a few different options. You can select it if you have it on in the background to do an auto power off or a direct power on. Obviously you can choose your menu settings, which where do you want them to be displayed? I like the top left personally. And then how long does it stay on? In this case, I leave it always on until I back out of it. And then sometimes you can have it set so that there's a reminder message like if your projector is on and you forgot about it, it'll display at them a message below letting you know that your projector is still on, but there's no content going to it right now. 
You can rename the sources, which is really cool. So if you have HDMI 1 is your PlayStation and HDMI 2 is your cable box and you're running directly into that, gives you the ability to make it kind of easier to remember. You can also go through different selections of the sound that's coming out of the projector unit itself and what source if you wanted to pick up a certain source at the beginning. In your advanced settings, it gives you your lamp timer if you want to reset it. Let's say you install a new bulb after time. HDMI settings, you can set a password so maybe if you're the only one that should be using the projector or you want little kids to only use it at certain times of the day, you can set that password. You can also have your LED in indicators turned off if you don't want the light in the background. Um, and then obviously you can go through reset every setting that you want as well. As far as firmware upgrades, one of the nice things about the TK850i is that you can upgrade your and, and update your unit over Wi-Fi. Um, the projectors in the past required downloads of the actual um, software itself before on a USB dongle and then you would have to upgrade it in the unit that way. In this case, you can just do it right over Wi-Fi. Super huge advantage, um, but it also gives you the ability, because it has that Wi-Fi chip, to also play your uh, your media player content, like your YouTube and your Disney Plus, like I showed you earlier. Last portion at the top is your source information. It just tells you exactly what, what, your, uh, what source you're playing it through. In this case, like I showed you earlier, HDMI 3. Picture mode is uh, silence, which means um, it's a little bit more quiet. The resolution is showing right here, 2160p or 4K. Uh, and then it gives you a bunch of different other information, how long the, the lamp has been on. In this case, I've already used it for about 89 hours, um, whether or not the 3D is off, the firmware version, etc. Okay, so now that you've seen this, let's go back to our source list again, and let's just show you an example of a video game on this projector. I'm going to switch back to HDMI 2, which is what I have the PlayStation 5 set to. So as you see, in 2160p, 60Hz, HDR10 is what the signal is producing from the PlayStation. Um, still keeping this um, in eco mode, I'm going to go ahead and jump into a game of Rocket League. Excellent. As you can see, the image is plenty clear and very bright. Um, this game does have some very vivid colors. Uh, as I've showed you in my previous video, I think this is one of the best games to show you those examples. So now that Rocket League has booted up, this gives you a good idea of what what's in store and how bright this projector actually is. It looks real good. This is in HDR10 right now. Let's go ahead and hit the field and give you a little taste of what it's like for actual gameplay. Real clear picture still, nice and smooth, no juddering, uh, a, a, a very good projector to use. Um, now the latency itself uh, is a little bit higher for projectors. Um, it's in the 40 range as far as milliseconds. Um, for a super competitive gamer, I would not recommend uh, using the projector, but if you're just doing casual gaming, I really don't think you would notice a difference. I've played plenty of games on this projector, uh, including your first person shooters, your racing games. Um, still have no trouble keeping up but I've also not been in an ultra competitive setting to compare it to something like a gaming monitor or a 120 hertz LG TV like I reviewed earlier. Make sure you check out that video as well. Kind of gives you an idea of how to set it to 120 hertz and things of that nature if you're planning on buying a TV as well. Cool, so the next game I wanna show you is Call of Duty Warzone, another game that I play quite often, like I said. It's not the greatest projector for first-person shooters, but I wanted to give you an idea of a common modern game 
and what it looks like on this BenQ TKA50i. As you can see on the home screen, the colors are nice and bright, uh, realistic skin tones. Um, we'll jump in a game here and I can show you exactly what I'm talking about. In terms of switching, I would say that this projector is about average. It's not the fastest changing uh, projector that I have seen as far as an input source goes. That, uh, the winner to that goes to LG from what I've seen so far. I just think that this projector has about a middle of the road changeover. Um, not bad, but not top of the line yet. Take a look around the map. Colors come through really good. As you can see, the red roof in this building. Nice vivid HDR. Give you an idea what it's like. Nice and smooth. Definitely runs at the 60 hertz that they claim, nothing less. Really handles the PlayStation 5 well. Alright guys, so another feature that I wanted to point out to you guys was um, the ability that this projector has to shift the lens. So lens shift in particular is an option that if you have like a low hanging ceiling or your projector is very high up and you need the image to move down rather than add an extension to the projector mount itself, you're able to do so. So in this case, the lens shift unit is actually right here. You can see this small black knob, right? As you turn that right and left, the image on the screen will move up and down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the test pattern up just so you can get an idea of how that works. And I'll show you as I move that lens shift option. So here's your test pattern. And like I said before, the uh, lens shift is gonna move this particular image up and down. Here it goes all the way down. I'd say that moved roughly six to seven inches. And what this allows you to do is really center this on your projector screen. Now my screen um, is not the best example right now because I still need to build a new entertainment cabinet um, so that center channel can get out of the way. But now that the screen is installed, I have an idea of exactly what my dimensions need to be. Uh, in this case, this projector is gonna be really helpful that it has uh, the lens shift to go up and down so I can stay uh, above my media cabinet um, and still allow the projector to hang only about six inches from the ceiling. Pretty cool feature if you ask me. So anyway, if you guys have any questions in particular about the BenQ TK850i, I hope I explained as much as I could. Um, I definitely tried to. I would be glad to answer any questions that you guys might have on this great projector. Uh, definitely give it a shot if you're testing out different machines. And thanks again for tuning in to this episode of The Dangen. Talk to you next time. Oh,